Hello there, I'm Chris Cohen, and thank you for joining me for episode number six of Gowing Life's Longevity Weekly. This is where I give you a quick rundown of just some of the amazing work that our researchers have been looking at over the past few days. This week, again, we've got three fascinating topics, all from the world of health, longevity, and wellness. So without further ado, please sit back and enjoy. So for our first topic this week, we're going to be talking about the extremely exciting piece of news that broke last Monday of the COVID-19 vaccine produced by Pfizer and BioNTech. So what do we actually know about this vaccine? The vaccine requires two doses, the second one being administered three weeks after the first. This is a placebo controlled trial. This means that of the 43,000 plus participants who enrolled in the study, half of them were given the placebo and the other half were given the active form of the vaccine. Pfizer revealed that the vaccine is 90% effective. But what does that actually mean? In the group that received the placebo vaccine, 86 individuals went on to then get infected by COVID. This is compared to only eight individuals from the actual vaccine group. Now, these are some really successful numbers coming out of Pfizer and BioNTech and some really exciting stuff. But how does the vaccine actually work? The researchers at Pfizer and BioNTech focused on the genetic sequence for the virus's spike protein. This can be used as an identifier by the body to recognise the virus. This was used to synthesise an mRNA sequence, instructions that cells can use to make the spike protein. The synthetic mRNA made by the researchers is packaged into a lipid nanoparticle that delivers the instructions to a cell. Once inside the cell, its cellular machinery follows the mRNA instructions to produce the viral protein. This is displayed on the surface of the cell and stimulates an immune response. Now these are some really encouraging results and although preliminary, these do suggest that a vaccine for COVID can be really effective. For our second topic this week, we're going to talk about dementia. Dementia is a neurological condition which results from the degradation of our mental capabilities to a senile state, eventually leading to death. Now, earlier this year, Gowing Life hosted Professor Chas Buntra, Vice Chancellor of the University of Oxford, who talked about our past and future battle with dementia. So here's a short clip. So today, across the UK, we've got 850,000 people with dementia. In 2050, that number will be 2.1 million people with dementia. We will have two cities the size of Birmingham with dementia. The average cost of caring for those patients is £32,000 a year to the taxpayer. That's despite the fact that two-thirds of the costs are borne by the relatives. So if you add all that up, we are spending £26 billion a year just caring for our dementia patients. <coughs> all of us who live to more than 80, one in six of us will have dementia. We've not come up with a new <coughs> drug for dementia since 2002. That drug only works in the first nine to 12 months. Um, and then after, as the disease declines, it stops working. And this one disease is going to financially cripple many societies. And I, I don't think we're anywhere close to getting a drug that's going to slow down the progression of this disease. It's frightening. The 2017 Lancet Commission on Dementia provided nine potentially modifiable risk factors key to fighting this neurodegenerative epidemic. Published recently, the 2020 edition adds three more risk factors to that list. Brain injury, excessive alcohol consumption and air pollution. The authors modelled these risk factors into early, mid and late life, as you can see in this infographic here. They also suggest how to mitigate these risk factors. Starting off in early life, education is vital. This is why the authors advocate for the availability of free and secondary education for everyone. Moving on to midlife, it is extremely important to protect yourself against hearing loss, try to avoid head injury as much as possible, and consistently aim to keep blood pressure of 130 or less in midlife to protect against hypertension. Drinking no more than 210 millilitres of alcohol each week and do everything you can to prevent obesity. Now moving on to later life, try to prevent smoking, 
increase socialization and spending time with older people to avoid depression, maintain an active lifestyle in middle and later life, reduce your exposure to both air pollution and secondhand tobacco residue, and make sure to do whatever you can to prevent diabetes. Now, as we heard from Professor Chas Buntra earlier, developing a dementia drug is far beyond the horizon. This is why mitigating the prevalence of this neurodegenerative epidemic may be the best option. The 2020 Lancet Commission, I think, lays out the best plan to be able to do this. As you get older, you may notice you don't sleep as well. Older adults tend to find it harder to get to sleep. But what can we do to prevent this? Well, one option is to supplement melatonin. But what is melatonin? Melatonin is a hormone that is secreted by the brain, and it is well known for its regulation of sleep. Now, light suppresses melatonin production, whilst darkness allows melatonin levels to rise and to promote sleep. Taking melatonin supplements improves sleep quality, mainly by reducing the time it takes to actually get to sleep, but it also increases the time you spend asleep. And if this wasn't enough, Studies have also shown that taking melatonin has powerful anti-cancer and anti-obesity properties. So if getting to sleep is something that you struggle with, I definitely think it's a good idea to give melatonin a go. And that is it for this week's Longevity Weekly. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope you enjoyed it. If you'd like to find out more, please visit the Gowing Life website, www.gowinglife.com. We can find a whole host of other articles, including one about gene editing restoring vision in mice with retinal disease, how scientists believe rapamycin to be the first effective anti-aging drug, and how a new biological clock will help us explore the aging of the human brain. Go and check it out, and please like and subscribe to our YouTube channel as well. Thank you so much, and see you next week.